Hello, my name is Carissa, and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to make an APA7 style bar chart with error bars using Excel. Uh, for this example, I'm using the same data set that, is, that I used um, to do the R tutorial on how to make a bar chart. Um, so this data is publicly available, and I'll link it in the description box below. And what we're interested in looking at is um, how the average um, weekly meditations vary based on the person or the respondent's age group. So for example, we can see here, this is our, our target plot um, for people less than um, 20 years of age. They meditate on average about six times per week. So to get started, I exported this little table from R um, from my summary information, but you could easily, if you have the raw data in Excel, you can sort by the age group and then you can select the cells um, that you know correspond and you can compute the um, mean and standard deviation um, from those cells. And then with that information, we can go ahead and compute the confidence intervals by simply taking the mean and then adding 1.96 times standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of people in that group. That's the formula for um, upper bound and then the lower bound, we would just be subtracting that. Um, so this information is just going to allow us to get the, um, the error bars for the confidence interval. So let's go ahead and get started. I just have the same information here. We're going to start by selecting the two um, the two variables that will be going in our plot, which is the age and then the mean weekly meditations. So what we can do once we select them, we can go ahead and go insert. Then we're going to insert a bar chart. Voila. Um, so this is the default that we kind of get in Excel, and we just have to make some modifications to make it APA style. First, we'll remove the title because we do not have APA um, uh, headings like that. Or we do not have headings like that in APA style charts. We'll delete these lines. Let's also um, now go on to these numbers. We want to make sure that um, that our minimum value is zero because um, we should be starting our plots at zero and then going up to, in this case, eight looks like a good good fit. Um, if we wanna get rid of those decimals because they're not needed, we can go ahead to number and where it says decimal places, we will just put zero. Perfect. So the next thing that we can do um, is we can actually add our tick marks and we want them on the outside. And then let's go ahead and add, um, we're gonna make sure that our numbers are black just to make them easier to see. And then I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. Okay, so now we have a nice um, vertical axis with tick marks. We'll do the same thing on the horizontal axis. So we'll put tick marks on the outside. And then we're going to go ahead and make the font a little bit bigger. Change it so it's a little bit darker. Yeah. Okay, so now we can see we have some nice um, and clean axes. And we made the font a little bit bigger um, so we can see it. We're next gonna go ahead and just change the color of these plots to be, um, I'm gonna do them in gray scale. Something like this, they'll go a little bit lighter. Okay, and the next thing we can do is go ahead and add our chart element. So we're gonna start 
with the axis titles. So for the horizontal axis, we're just going to add age. And let's also go ahead and make this in um, black. Let's make it size 12 and we'll bold it because our titles are in bold case when we make APA plots. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with the Y axis. But in this case, we have weekly meditations. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Again, make it slightly bigger, change the font case um, and color, and make it bold. Cool. This is coming along. Now that we have all of the basic elements of our chart done, it is time for us to add the error bars. So to add error bars to this chart, we're going to go ahead and select Add Chart Element, and we're going to go down to Air Bars. Now, we don't want to use these defaults because, again, the data that we've input is simply the average from the data set. So we're going to go to More Air Bar Options. I'm going to double click on these air bars. OK, so we have our options open. And here we can see how we can um, edit these. So to edit the air bars, we're going to select custom specify value. So we want to make sure with the air bars, we don't want to enter the same value because we have four different groups. And so the 95% confidence intervals are different for each of these groups. So since we've computed the, um, the confidence intervals, I do want to make it clear that when we add the error bars to these Excel, um, or when we add error bars in Excel, you can't just enter the lower and upper bounds of the confidence intervals. Um, but instead, you have to input the number to add and to subtract. So what do I mean by that? To get from you know, 5.96 to 6.1, you need to add 1.4. To get to 5.96 to the lower bound of 5.82, you have to subtract 0.14. So you're essentially looking at the absolute difference between the mean and the upper bound and the mean and the lower bound. So Let's go ahead and edit these error bars. We're going to specify the value for the positive error. We're going to say it equals this. For the negative error, we're also going to say it equals this. So now we can see here we have entered our error bars. And we can see that they vary based on the group as expected, because um, the difference between the upper bound and the lower bound is greatest for this group than it is for this group. The next thing that we are going to do is add our error bars. So to do that, we'll go ahead and select add chart elements, error bars. And we need to specify custom options because we've only input the mean information. Um, so there's no way that Excel is going to know um, the standard error, standard deviation, because we haven't entered it. So let's go to more options and select these columns or these bars. And we want to enter a custom amount because um, entering a fixed value doesn't make sense because we um, have different groups and they have different 95% confidence intervals. So we want to be able to make sure that each group has the accurate information. When entering custom error bars in Excel, uh, we select custom and then specify value. And what it's going to do is bring this up. So positive error value, negative error value. 
the positive error value is simply the difference between the 95% confidence interval upper bound and the mean. And the negative error value is the distance between the lower confidence interval bound and the mean. So in this case, um, our positive error and negative error values are the same value because the upper and lower bounds go the same distance away from the mean. And in that case, this information, I just computed it by simply taking the difference between the upper bound and the mean, which is also equal to the difference between the mean and the lower bound. So back to here, we'll specify value and we're gonna say that the positive error value equals this column, the negative value equals this column. So now we can see we have our little confidence intervals, our error bars. Um, I'm gonna make them black, you can make them bigger, whatever you'd like, but let's just do this for now. And this also should confirm our intuition because it looks like the 95% confidence interval is the largest for the less than 20 age group. And that makes sense because it has the largest, um, the largest error between the mean and the upper bound. And so now we can see that we have achieved our plot and that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.